All right, good evening everyone. So today we'll be talking about 2D motion blur. Um, basically post-processing your motion blur in your compositing software like Nuke. Okay, and some people like to call it the, the motion vector, the, the vector blurs or your velocity pass. So really depending on, on who you're talking to. Okay, so basically they means the same thing. It's post motion blur. And um, today I will just show you guys um, how to get it set up and how we can use um, the additional vector, the motion vector pass in Nuke to, to achieve the post motion blur. Okay, so but before I continue, let's talk about the, the pros and cons. So basically the pros is straightforward. You get a cleaner uh, motion blur uh, result. If you're doing it in post, you get a, a very nice smooth um, looking images rather than you have to f uh, increase your AA samples to solve the noise in the motion blur. So that's definitely one of the, the pros. And it probably will take, uh, the render time will be cheaper than to calculate the motion blur and again to solve the noise in the motion blur, right? Okay, but the cons is um, basically you can't post motion blur um, that object if it's reflected in a uh, reflection or uh, something reflective. So basically if uh, he's running past a, a mirror or something, you can post motion blur your character, but you can't post motion blur the character's reflection with the motion blur, right? So that's definitely some of the, the constraint. And of course, you, we talk about reflection, it also means your refraction, you will not get it. Okay, and another very big um, negative part about uh, this post motion blur is it does, it can't do radial motion blur. So basically if you have your cars that has the wheels turning or you have your helicopters that has the blades rotating. So those are not achievable in um, post motion blur. Um, so basically post motion blur only gives you um, linear motion blur, right? Cool, so let's talk about how to set it up. Um, so I have a, a simple scene here. Again, I'll be just using this, um, this shot from um, Matt and uh, I'll just pick a frame where we see the motion blur here. Um, like maybe we take 382 okay let's take a look again yeah let's take 382 where we see the heavy motion blur on the hands and a bit on the face okay so 382 okay I did a test render without motion blur and this is how it looks like okay all right, so um, for demonstration purposes, I will just render a frame with motion blur and a frame without motion blur, but with the motion vectors so that we can compare the, the rendered motion blur and the one that we did the post motion blur um, to see how much difference um, there is. And you will probably have a better idea on what you can achieve with post motion blur. Okay. Cool. So first thing, we want to render our image with motion blur. So how we do that is we'll go into render settings, Arnold renderer and motion blur tab. So make sure you click on enable. Okay. So that will means that your render now will process the motion blur um, during render time. And also um, if your camera is moving, you need to check your camera blur as well. And of course the keys basically means um, the higher the amount, it has more points for it to interpolate for the motion blur. So basically, basically means the higher the number, the smoother your motion blur is. Um, and of course, it comes with a heavier render time. So if you do not need it, um, do not. So just keep it as default. Um, I think the default is at two. So I, I prefer to keep it at three. So at least if it's calculating a, a rotation, there is three points for it to interpolate instead of point A and B and it's just smooth in between. So you do not really get the curve um, in between. So I like to keep my, my base at three. And the shutter angle basically means how how long the shutter is open. So the longer the shutter is open, basically means you have a longer streak, streak of um, your motion blur. So the default is 180 degree, which is um, the what we normally use. And if for some reason you want your motion blur to be, you no, know, it has the longer streak. Um, you can increase the length to like, let's say we just double it. So it becomes 360. That will give you two times the motion blur uh, result. Okay, so for this demonstration, we'll just keep it as the default. Okay, so this will allows us to render our scene with motion blur. So how we do that? Okay, let's just save a frame. 
we'll just update the scene just in case and we'll do a, a quick render so now you can see that it's calculating the motion blur okay let's just uh, let it resolve fully okay so this is at 100 percent and we want to let me just find uh, okay we want it we want to save to a specific um, demo directory so we'll just save this exr to this directory and this is with motion blur okay motion blur exr save okay so now we want to render another image with motion blur but without motion blur okay so what i mean by that is we want to render an image with motion blur data but without motion blur without motion blur baked into the renders okay so what we technically should get is a non-motion blur frame with the motion blur data okay so how we can check if the data exists is we'll go to okay so if you do not have this uh, motion vector aov activated just make sure you choose it from your AOVs and make sure you, you output the motion vector AOV. Okay, so once you output, you can check in your interactive session. You can see that there's this um, data that's um, within this motion vector AOV. Okay, so now what we do is, um, so we, we can confirm that now the data is there. We want to turn off the motion blur that it's being baked into the render. So how we can do that? Okay. So we definitely can't turn off the motion blur. If we turn it off, basically the motion blur data will not be calculated. So we will go into diagnostics, okay? And under feature overrides, we can turn off the motion blur here. Okay, so what this means is the render will still render with motion blur, but the image will run out without the motion blur. Okay, so let's just um, update our scene and do a test render again. Okay, so, you, so now you can see, um, although our motion blur is turned on, our renders does not have the motion blur, right? And how we can make sure the data is there, just check our motion. So, um, so basically, now our renders have no motion blur, okay? And with the motion vector. Okay, so now we'll stop this and we'll save this image out, okay, to the directory we want. No motion blur, but with the vector. Okay, so it's done. We'll move over to the nuke side. Okay, let's just... Um, okay, so now we nuke. Let's just import in the two renders that we made. Okay, so one is with motion blur. And you already can see how noisy the data, um, the renders is. And to solve this, you, we need to increase the, the samples, the AA samples, like crazy to to probably solve this um yeah and it will become very expensive if you were to do that okay so now this and the one without motion blur okay so first thing i like to do is to make sure always double check that we have the the aovs in new okay so go to layer contact sheet just make sure the motion vector is there okay so that's good okay and the note for us to use in new to customize the the motion blur it's called vector blur okay so um before i moved on so vector blur vector blur by default um i think from nuke 10 onwards they they already changed the how it's being calculated in how it's being read i mean the how the information is being read in nuke so if you were to use it straight out of the box, um, I will just show you guys what you'll get. So we change this UV channel to motion vector. And we want to change the, the preset to our Arnold renderer. And we'll just increase the, the motion blur um, amount. So we can take a look at the... Okay, so you can see, um, although the motion is, is his hand coming down, the motion blur should be horizontal. But this vector blur is giving us a horizontal... Uh, motion blur it's as if like he's moving in the left to right direction instead of a up to down um direction so that tells us you no know, um nuke is reading the the information wrongly so how we can fix that is we need to remap this information the motion vector into a, a different channel called the motion channel 
So how we do that is we'll create a shuffle node. Okay. Then we want to shuffle out our motion vector and we want it to be input into, you can use other layers and you can choose motion or you can create a new one and you can type in the motion yourself. Okay. Once you type in, you will see that it creates uh, the forward channel, the I mean the forward, the backward channel. So this, all these will be used in the vector blur itself. So, so it will, sh it will give the correct data to the vector blur node on how it should be calculating the, the motion blur. So now if we plug this in after the shuffle, so basically at this point, we have an additional AOV of the forward with the same information from the, the motion vector, right? So inside vector blur, we will want to change this UV channel to motion. Okay, the one we just created. And you can already see, now we are getting the correct motion blur, right? And okay, let's just quickly do a comparison um, before and after. I mean, the baked in motion blur and the one that we created. Okay, so you see that there's this offset um, happening. Okay, so what's happening is in this Arno renderer, um, there is an offset. Um, there is, I mean, there is no offset in the shutter, so you can put it to zero. Okay, so now if we look at the, the image, the comparison, you can see that, okay, now it's lining up. Just that maybe you no, know, the blur is not enough, right? So what we can do is you can increase the the motion fall off. Okay, let's just increase it slightly. Okay, so now you see we are getting it to line up like how our brand, our baked in motion blur is. Although there's some difference um here and there, but overall you can see that it's it's not too far off, and it gives us a a nicer image like it, it has a smoother motion blur compared to a very noisy and bad rendered um, image so you see without and with the post motion blur yep so that is how you can output um, motion vectors and how you can use them in nuke to allows you to post process your motion blur and having it controllable in Nuke, it, it probably ha can help you, for example, at some point, you know, I feel that he's doing this massive jump and he's um, jumping super fast. I want to, you know, increase the motion blur. Uh, of course, you can do it like, of course, not these crazy values, but you can increase the, the motion blur values to exaggerate those moments. Or you can even animate it, for example, you know, at this point, He's doing a very quick movement. I want the motion blur to to be exaggerated. I can animate the the motion blur amount, and it gives you controls in in post. Rather than if your motion blur is picked in, um, then you you can't further you no know, um adjust how how the you can't further add direct how your motion blur um looks. Yeah, so that's the the beauty of post motion blur and um. Of course, um, in this scenario, it works out nicely, but it's a case by case basis. Your shot might not work with post motion blur. Maybe it's there is a lot of reflecting um, windows or mirrors. Then, if you you were to motion blur your character, you will see that in the reflection, your character is not motion blurred. So that could be a limitation um, for for your shots. So um, if your shot allows, um, definitely I would recommend you guys try out this. Um, vector blur approach and hopefully it helps yeah so um yeah if this session is helpful to you please remember to click the like and subscribe button and if you have any question feel free to leave it in the comment section and i can get back to you whenever um, i have some time and cool see you the next video thanks everyone